Hi everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today, I got something kind of cool to show you. We've been to the auction again, and this time we bought an old uh, circa 1985 um, Busy B. They didn't call them Craft X yet. It's a Busy B B314 Mini Mill. So, um, it was in the basement of somebody's house that we had to take it out from, so... Uh, that's the, most of it, the tower we'll call it. There's the base and the cross slide. And, and this is the cabinet that it was sitting on. So we took that all apart to get it out of the basement. And now we're going to put it back together. They had, it was kind of flimsy the way they had it, um, set. So we're going to use this three quarter inch plywood for a base. And then the drip tray goes over top of that, and then the mill bolts down. Anyway, let me show you what all else we got with this thing. It was pretty good. I mean, it wasn't all one lot, but I'll show you what the mill did come with. Um, it came with this dividing head, which I was very, very keen um, to get, because this allows you to cut splines and cut gears and all manner of different things. Um, and then in other lots, I found, um, I got these three chucks. Now this is a Morse taper number three. This is the actual chuck for the mill. And these two are Morse taper number two. These are uh, suitable for my for lathes. And my chuck for my lathe is pretty much shot, so I'm I'm very happy to get these. Uh, we also got an adapter from number two taper to number three, and on this little tool here is an adapter from taper number one to taper number two. Uh, what else did we get? All kinds of stuff. It was all separate lots. We got this this uh, end mill. This, um, from what I can determine, is the original fly cutter that came with the mill when it was new. I may be wrong, but doing some research and looking at how these things were equipped, I, I think this may be uh, an original from the mill. Uh, it came with this cute little knurling tool, all adjustable. You can, you can set the angles of the knurler. It also came with um, these two adapters. These are for... Um, gluing up so you can cut wood on the Myford lathe. We got this little box of tools here. And that's about it, I guess. Oh, and these two nice micrometers. Look at the leather case that this one came in. Pretty nice. Uh, this is uh, some kind of crazy cutter. Not quite sure what I'll do with that, but it's got to be good for something. Um, this too, it's some kind of chamfering, some kind of chamfering tool. And then there's all kinds of other little, got some kind of a little boring tool. That, that's a gear cutter on that arbor. Very interesting. So we did okay, I'd say. Now what we got to do is get this mill set back up and uh, plug it in and see if it works. So we've got the, I don't know, the substrate, I guess you could call it, and the, and the tray bolted down good with 5 16 carriage bolts. Now we're going to go ahead and, and lift the base of the milling machine on, and we can put the hand wheels back on it. For some reason, they were all off, but at least they came with it. Now so we've got that bolted down, and we've got the hand wheels on. Interestingly enough, there's nothing holding the hand wheels on. It's quite bizarre. There's no little detent or anything. There's there's no evidence of anywhere for a set screw to go. Um, nor is there any thread in the end of the shaft for a screw to hold it on. So don't ask me why. They're not attached, but that's something we can work on later. Now we can put the post and the head on. I've, I've cleaned up this surface and the corresponding surface on the bottom of the post. I've got the screws 
and the tool ready. Now I just have to go get something that'll lift this thing up because it's heavy. It's probably about um, 150 very awkward pounds. Well, we used the cherry picker and some creative strapping and we got the power head and the post and everything back on it. Now I'm going to go ahead and install the electric motor. We got the motor installed now. We've got the idler pulley installed. And you can see there, everything's lined up nicely. Now we can put on our new belts that we bought. Now we can hook the wires back up. Lucky for me, I had enough common sense to take a picture of that before I took it apart. It's got a reverser on it, which is kind of a, an add-on accessory. Um, that's a cool thing to have. I'm not sure what it's good for, but I'm sure as I go along, I will figure out what it's good for. Uh, but right now, we're going to get this in and hooked up. Oh, there we have all the wiring hooked up. Now I'm going to plug the thing in and turn it on and see what happens. So here goes nothing. Uh, we're going to put the thing in forward and turn it on. All right, it works. Now we'll shut it off, put it in reverse, runs backwards. Now we should be able to put that in off position and nothing should happen. And I wouldn't doubt because when I got it, the switch was on like that. I think they were using that to turn it on and off. Um, I'm not sure I would do that, but anyway, you've got two ways to turn it on and off. Well, so that's that. We got it unloaded and all put back together and it, and it works. So what we're going to do, if you look over there at the disaster area, that's my garage, um, back in that corner over there, we're going to open up a little spot and make ourselves a little um, machine shop where we can go and fiddle around with our lathe and our mill and we've got our, our, valve, our, our valve service equipment. Um, yeah, we got a lot of cool stuff. So uh, in the next video, we'll be getting to work on that, but that's it for this one. So uh, until we meet again, thanks for tuning in and this is Kevin checking out from the Claremont Classic Garage. So long.